Okay, let's do a week six recap. I keep messing this up, and so I'm tired of doing all the different details. So this is going to be short and sweet. Here we go. We've got a product rule. Product rule. And it says the derivative of a product of functions, f of x times g of x, is equal to f prime g plus g prime f. So, for example, the derivative of x squared times sine x is equal to, and I need to take the derivative of x squared, multiply it by sine x, then take the derivative of sine x and multiply it by x squared. Through multiplication. Okay, well that's 2x sine x plus cosine x times x squared. And with all these rules, we demonstrate it with two functions, but you can always have more. Um, it's completely arbitrary what you consider one function, what you consider another. So, like, if I had x squared times sine x times 3 to the x. Oh no, what do you do? Well, you take the derivative first, so the derivative of x squared, times the second, which is sine x times 3 to the x, plus, and now you need to take the derivative of the second, sine x times 3 to the x times the first, x squared. Okay, well, that is 2x times, well, I guess I'll write as 3 to the x, sine x, plus, oh, hey, look at this. We have its own product rule. So I'm going to put that x squared out front, and then parentheses, and let's do the product rule. I have to do the derivative of sine x uh, times, right, well, whatever. Derivative of sine x is cosine x times, and now I leave the second function alone, 3 to the x, plus, and now I take the derivative of 3 to the x, which is natural log of 3, 3 to the x times, and then I leave the sine x alone. Okay, here it is. Here's the derivative of this triple. And you can imagine how to do with four, right? If I had to do with four, you leave three functions on the inside, then you have to do the derivative of all three. And when you have to do the derivative of all three, something like this occurs. And so it just, it gets bigger and bigger, but if you do it step by step, totally doable. Um, all the rules we learn, they are all actually results. All derivatives come from the limit definition. Um, and so they're always gonna be consistent with all of our old stuff. For example, if I want to take the derivative of x squared, we know we can do the power rule, but you can think of this as the derivative of x times x. Well, I take the derivative of the first, that's 1, times the second, plus derivative of the second, that's 1, times the first, and I get 2x. Okay. So, anyway, that's the product rule. Uh, we also talked about the chain rule. And with two functions, this is written, the derivative of f of g of x is equal to f prime of g of x. So I take the derivative of the outside function, and I leave the inside the same, times g prime of x. Which I could also write as f prime g of x times the derivative of g of x. Okay. Which I could also write as... <laughs> Sometimes people write it like this, and uh, I don't want to confuse you all, but I'll just show you now. So this is derivative of f, but its inside is g, and then derivative of g with its inside being x. Okay, let's do an example. So, oh, 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 oh. Let's use this and figure out what happens if there's three functions. So if I have derivative of f of g of h. Well, this is f prime of g of h of x times, and now you have to take the derivative of the inside, which is g of h of x. And so that's f prime g of h of x. Uh, one, two, three times, and this is going to be its own chain rule. So now I have g prime h 
times h prime x. And so it just unpacks the layers one at a time. I honestly think the chain rule is, I mean, once you start to see functional composition, it's very simple. You just start to hop in. You hit f, so you take f prime. Then you hit g, so you take g prime. Then you hit h, so you take h prime. But each time you only do one derivative, leave the rest the same. Then do the next derivative, leave the rest the same. Then do the next. Let's do an example. So I could have sine of x squared, and I want to take its derivative. Well, I do the derivative of sine, and that's cosine, and I leave x squared the same. Then I do the derivative of x squared. So that's cosine x squared times 2x. There we go. I'm done. All right, let's do another. We'll do it with three functions this time. Let's do sine of 1 over square root x plus x squared. And I want to take its derivative. Well, I have an outside function. I, and then my next function is actually 1 over, and my last function is this stuff down here. So I'll write it out, and hopefully it, it makes sense. So derivative of the outside is cosine, and I leave the inside the same. And here's, here's the big hint write 1 over as a negative 1 power. And now hopefully you can see uh, it's it's this function here with a function inside. So I need to take the derivative of what's highlighted in blue. That's a power rule. And I leave the inside the same, root x plus x squared. And then I go into another layer, and I ask, OK, can I take the derivative of this thing? And yeah, I can. The derivative of root x is 1 half x to the 1 half, and the derivative of x squared is 2x. And now we're done. There's no more layers to go in. I, I took the derivative of that final inside function. Here it is. I stop. So this whole thing, that is the derivative of sine of 1 over root x plus x squared. And if you know these two rules, that's really all you need to know. Um, we can give you another rule to remember to speed up computation. We can say if you have f over g, so these are functions, I can write the x, but you know, it really doesn't matter. Then it's the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the derivative of the bottom times the top all over the bottom squared. This is called the quotient rule. Quotient rule. But it's really just a result of the product rule and the chain rule. Um, because you can write this as the derivative of f times g of x to the negative 1 power. Okay, and so how do we do this? Well, there's a product, so I have to do the product rule. So I need to do f prime times g of x to the negative 1 power plus, and then I have to take the derivative of g of x to the negative 1 power times f. Right? So, so this equal sign here, the product rule, And OK, so that's f prime. And this is 1 over g. So I'll just do f prime over g plus. And now I have to take the derivative of this. And that requires the chain rule. So right here, we're going to be using the chain rule. The negative 1 comes down. I leave the inside the same. I get a negative 2 power times. Now I take the derivative of the inside, g prime x. And then that f of x is just coming along for the ride. OK, now we're just doing algebra. So this is f prime of x over g of x. And here's a minus, so minus. And here's g prime times f, g prime times f over. And then I have a g squared. And you might look at this and say, well, that's not quite the same as what you told me up here. And yeah, it's not quite the same. I don't have a common denominator yet. So I have to multiply top and bottom over here by g, and then it will be the same. OK, that's essentially what we covered in week six. Um, I guess let's do an example where you just 
combine all these rules. So if I want to take the derivative of sine of x squared times 3 to the x over, uh, we'll just do cosine x. Okay. There's different ways to get the correct answer. Um, I'm just going to go through and, well, yeah, um, I see a division, so I'm going to write out the quotient rule, quotient rule. I need to take the derivative of the top, so that's, I'm going to write s instead of sine just to speed things up, so sine x squared times 3 to the x, and I multiply it by the bottom minus, and now I need to take the derivative of the bottom, and it turns out the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So this is the derivative of cosine. And I multiply by the top, sine of x squared, 3 to the x, and all of that is over cosine squared, because I square the bottom. Okay, so uh, that's great, but I still need to simplify this part over here, and that requires, well, there's a product, so let's write out the product rule. So I have to take the derivative of the first piece, so the derivative of sine of x squared times 3 to the x plus, and now I need to take the derivative of the second piece, the derivative of 3 to the x times sine of x squared, and all of this was this. So all of that is getting multiplied by cosine x. Then after that, minus minus gives me plus, and now I have sine of x, sine of x squared, 3 to the x. And all that is over cosine squared x, which I should just really start abbreviating to C. Uh, da -da -da. All right. Hey, look, right here. That's a function inside a function. That's a chain rule. So I have to take the derivative of the sine. That's cosine. I leave the inside the same times. Now I take the derivative of the inside. That's 2x. Now I multiply it by this 3 to the x. And here I'll just, I really should be using different colors throughout. But I don't know. I'd rather just go back there and highlight. Okay, so that takes care of that first term. Plus. Now I have to do the derivative of 3 to the x. That's natural log of 3 times 3 to the x. And then I have my sine x squared. And all of this from before is getting multiplied by cosine of x. And then I have sine x, sine x squared, 3 to the x. And all that is over cosine squared x. But now I'm done. Now there's no more derivatives, right? That's the reason I was writing out derivative at each step, was to just sort of unpack. So this jump here is the chain rule. Um, this jump here is the product rule. And we began with the quotient rule. So, right, this is a great problem for a test because you have to use all the rules. Um, but it's still way easier then if you had to compute the limit as h goes to zero of sine of x plus h squared times 3 to the x plus h over cosine of x plus h minus and then all of that here but no h <laughs> all over h that would suck right so that's why these rules are great they're just results that we have since discovered and proven so anyway uh, don't expect to just have to use one rule. You often have to use multiple. But once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad. Uh, I strongly encourage you to do textbook problems that have solutions worked out. Anyway, all right, see you Monday.